Hi, this lecture about Perthes disease, sometimes known as Leg Calvay Perthes disease. Objectives of this lecture are to explain the pathology, presentation, and x rays of Perthes, and we're going also to speak about the classification of Perthes disease and what to expect and the prognosis for children who get Perthes disease, and then we're going to outline the treatment options for Perthes disease. A good source that you can use is Pediatric Orthopedic and Sport Medicine written by myself, Dr. Naga and Dr. Abdu, which is the second uh, edition of our first book. A good video that you can refer to is Hip Pain in Children. This is one of my earlier uh, video, um, and it talks about different causes of pain in children. Among them is Perthes. However, this video is going to give you more details. So what is Perthes? What does it mean, Perthes disease? Perthes disease is avascular necrosis of the femoral head in a skeletally immature child. So if avascular necrosis happens in skeletally mature child, that's not Perthes disease, that's called um, AVN or avascular necrosis. But when this condition, the avascular necrosis, which means disturbance of the blood supply to the femoral head, when it happens in skeletally mature, uh, immature child, that's when we consider that Perthes. So Perthes is avascular necrosis of the femoral head. It has to happen in a skeletally immature child. So we have here this picture. Uh, so this is the blood supply for the femoral head. When the blood supply for the femoral head is disrupted, the head becomes weaker and then it becomes collapsed. So uh, the, uh, uh, the um, uh, head will become necrotic, it will collapse, and will give the picture for Perthes disease. So the pathology in case of Perthes disease is self-limiting. What does this mean? It means that uh, the avascular necrosis that affect the femoral head will eventually resolve and the course of the disease takes about 24 months. So this picture here uh, shows the pathology of the Perthes disease. So in the, as we said, the Perthes disease is a avascular necrosis of um, a skeletally immature femoral head. So this is a picture of skeletally immature femoral head. So part of uh, head only is ossified and a significant part is not ossified, as you can see here, um, a, a cartilaginous part. Um, and this uh, um, uh, femoral head is subjected, of course, to uh, loading uh, during walking and other activities. So what will happen in the Perthes, the blood supply going to the uh, femoral uh, head uh, is affected. Um, so the blood supply coming from here and from here will be affected. Uh, this area will have avascular necrosis. Um, with continued, uh, continued loading of the femoral head, uh, we will have subchondral fractures. So uh, there will be uh, areas of uh, fracture uh, that uh, affect the uh, ossific part of the femoral head. And um, uh, of course, this area here is weak. Uh, so um, with mechanical loading, it will be uh, compressed and a collapse will happen. Um, so, um, first stage is the necrosis, and then, as we said, it's self-limiting, so blood vessel will come back and revascularization will happen. With revascularization, um, osteoclast will come and will resorb the dead uh, bone, so we will have a weak uh, uh, con uh, construct of the femoral head, you will have subchondral fracture, um, you will have compressed the trabeculae, uh, and you will lose that round uh, shape. So you see here, there was a round shape, and now you start having uh, a less round shape with mechanical loading, uh, because uh, that dead part cannot support all uh, the loads that is uh, received. And uh, more and more, we're getting more revascularization. Uh, osteoclast come, resorb the bone, and new osteoblast comes uh, to um, uh, deposit new bone. So this, the process continues um, and you have more bone deposition, but with mechanical loading, now the head is not even an oval, it become mushroom. Uh, so uh, you have um, uh, uh, now more revascularization, uh, more ossification, uh, but the head is deforming. So our goal of the treatment, as we're going to uh, talk at the end, is to try to get the femoral head as much rounded as possible. So we want to um, decrease the mechanical loading. We want to keep the femoral head protected. Uh, so by the end of the disease, by the end when all this area is vascularized uh, and the uh, process has um, been reversed, uh, we have more or less a round femoral head.
What are the risk factors for Peyronie's disease? These are the risk factors for increased coagulation, like protein C and S deficiency, factor five, a leaden mutation, steroids intake, lupus anticoagulant, and anticoagulopein antibodies. So what about the incidence of Peyronie's disease? Boys are much more affected than girls. Um, uh, the ratio is about four to one. And usually it affects uh, between the ages of four to eight years. So uh, Perthes disease is a disease usually of young boys between four and eight years. Uh, so if you uh, see a patient with a limping uh, for a few months in this age bracket, uh, think about Perthes disease. The condition can be bilaterally in about 10% of cases. However, in bilateral cases, the pathology usually starts in one hip and then after that starts in, an, uh, in another hip. So the two hips will be at different pathological stages when you get an X-ray. Uh, so what is the clinical presentation? The clinical presentation, uh, as we said, usually uh, it's a child uh, between the age of four to eight year old. Of course, it can come outside this age group, but usually most cases um, between four and eight year old, and most cases are boys. Uh, complaining of uh, hip and thigh pain. Sometimes this pain is referred to the knee, uh, and uh, this condition is associated with limping. Uh, usually the symptoms um, uh, are uh, uh, intermittent, and usually it has been going on uh, for a few months before uh, the um, family seeks medical attention. Another uh, clinical finding in cases of Perthes is these kids, because it's a chronic condition, they sometimes have flexion deformity of the hip. So how do you know if this patient has a flexion deformity? So this patient is laying, on the, uh, lying down in the bed. Uh, you don't see obvious flexion deformity, but this actually this patient has a Perthes on the right side that has been going on for a few months. So he has a flexion deformity, but he must, he's masking this flexion deformity with hyper uh, uh, doses of the back. So uh, to um, uh, make this flexion obvious, uh, what you do is you actually bring the other side, which is the left side, and flex the hip all the way. This will um, uh, uh, remove the, uh, uh, the hyperdordosis that this patient has, and the flexion deformity that he uh, has on this hip is now obvious. Uh, so most of these cases, uh, um, if they have been going on for a few months, they will have some element of flexion deformity. And to uh, make this flexion deformity obvious, uh, you um, uh, flex the hip and the knee on the other side, and you will be able to see the flexion deformity on the affected hip. So let's talk about the pathological stages of Perthes disease. So first thing, as we said, their necrosis will happen. So as we said, Perthes is avascular necrosis of a skeletally immature femoral head. So the first thing is the necrosis. So there will be uh, necrosis of the part of the femoral head. This can be a large part or a small part, uh, depending on the degree of affection. And then after that, we also said that's a self-limiting disease. So revascularization will happen. So new blood vessels will invade the necrotic bone. The osteoclast will start digesting the necrotic bone. And at that stage, um, there will be areas uh, void and there will the structure of the bone will be weak and the collapse of the femoral head will happen. So collapse will start in the revascularization and then comes the fragmentation in which the head started to uh, fragment uh, due to the weak structure and then the healing stage at the end, which is the reossification and remodeling in which uh, deposition of the new bone uh, followed by remodeling. Uh, and depending on the degree, how much remodeling happened to the femoral head, uh, is the prognosis of uh, this child. So what we are looking for is we would like to, uh, at the end of uh, um, remodeling, to have uh, more or less around femoral head, so this uh, child can have near normal uh, hip joint. Imaging uh, of cases of Perthes depends on the pathological stage, and in the next slides, we're going to show examples for uh, different imaging for Perthes depending on the pathological stage. In the next slide, I'm going to show some examples of uh, Perthes disease x-rays. And as we said, the, that depends on the pathological stage. So this is a case of early Perthes. You can see the subchondral uh, fracture here. The, all these arrows point to the subchondral fracture. So this is an early stage. Uh, another case of an early stage, so if you see, uh, this is a normal hip here, and if you can see here, of course, uh, this area here is 
uh, smaller than this area so the epiphysis here is smaller that tells you that there is some areas of collapse you can see the same thing in the AP uh, this one is smaller than this here so a collapse has happened into the right side still there is no fragmentation uh, so this is a, still an early stage of uh, Perth another case um, of relatively early disease uh, so this is the AP if you see here in the lateral Closely, uh, the subchondral fractures can be seen um, with some areas of sclerosis. Uh, here, uh, this is more advanced case of Perthes disease. Uh, so the collapse is much more. So we can, this is a normal hip. And this, of course, a hip that has collapsed. Uh, so this, uh, now we are uh, in more of a revascularization stage. So you can see um, uh, the market collapse in this epiphysis compared to this one. Uh, this is um, a case of bi bilateral perthes. As we said, bilateral perthes happens in 10%. And you can see here that they are in different stages. So this is a case of true bilateral perthes. And this is not a dysplasia or lipid storage disease. So you can see here there is more sclerosis here. This is more um, advanced uh, hip. This has more fragmentation than this one. So this is a case of bilateral perthes. Uh, so this is x-rays here show um, bilateral hip pathology that is looks similar uh, to the perthes. There is collapse of the epiphysis. However, this is not a bilateral perthes as we show in the, um, the previous x-rays. Cases of bilateral perthes, uh, usually one hip is uh, uh, more advanced in the pathology than the other. Uh, this case here, uh, both sides is completely uh, symmetrical. Uh, so uh, these cases uh, are usually uh, some sort of uh, epiphyseal dysplasias or a lipid storage uh, disease. Uh, this is one of my patients. She had a lipid storage disease disease and this is the picture of her hip um, uh, so this should not be confused with bilateral perthes uh, this now is more of a more healing so this is around the hip um, this is the uh, normal side you see here the uh, healing and remodeling started uh, the hip uh, is oval it's not as round as this one so this is um, late stages of perthes um, which um, is basically healing and remodeling uh, and this is even more um, uh, uh, case. This is uh, the patient completely resolved his uh, pathology. Uh, he um, was left with uh, more of an oval uh, head rather than the round. Uh, uh, but uh, here the stage uh, process has completed. Uh, as you see here, this is a skeletally mature patient. Um, so uh, the disease has uh, uh, basically the pathology has reversed. Uh, but he was left with an oval head rather than around it, as you can see here. So cases of Perthes disease will require orthopedic uh, referral. Um, and uh, in general, Perthes disease uh, does not have like a universal treatment plan that all orthopedic surgeons follow or most of them follow. Uh, there are treatment options and um, uh, there is no uh, consensus among orthopedic surgeons uh, on the uh, treatment protocol for Perthes disease. Despite there is no consensus among orthopedic surgeons for the treatment protocol, most of the orthopedic surgeons will agree on these principles that patients under the age of six, usually these patients uh, uh, will end having good prognosis. Uh, so in most cases, patients under six uh, years does not require um, a surgical treatment. Uh, and the treatment is usually symptomatic in the form of avoiding uh, sports and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication and, of course, uh, exercises and therapy to maintain abduction of the hip. Uh, uh, also, most uh, orthopedic surgeons uh, will agree that patients above the age of six years um, will require some sort of surgical intervention uh, uh, to allow the head to heal in a better position. This intervention can be uh, either femoral or pelvic osteotomy, and we're going to uh, show some examples in the next slides. We showed this uh, picture in the beginning of the lecture. I'd like to show it here again uh, uh, to uh, remind you that this is a self-limiting disease. So what is our goal of treatment? Our goal of treatment is try to end the disease with head as much round as possible. Um, so that it's not uh, um, a markedly oval or mushroom shape. How do we keep the head as much uh, round as possible? By keep it inside the acetabulum. So, so um, our treatment goal is to make sure that the head 
is not subluxating, is not coming out of the acetabulum socket, and it is well seated inside the joint because this will prevent the head from having market collapse and will allow it when the revascularization happens to keep as much round uh, 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 shape of the head as possible. So what is the uh, treatment goal? The treatment goal is to keep the femoral head deep inside the acetabulum so that it decreases the mm, loads on it and it decreases the amount of collapse and keeps the head as round as possible. So allowing when revascularization to um, uh, come back that the femoral head will stay as round as possible. Sometimes uh, maintaining the head inside the acetabulum can be uh, obtained uh, by non-surgical method like uh, casting, uh, in which the patients are put are in a cast that is widely uh, separated. We call petri cast. Um, so the idea is to keep the head also inside, deep inside the acetabulum by abducting. Abducting means pushing it out, because when you push the femur out, the uh, femoral head goes inside more and it becomes more contained in the acetabulum. Uh, so, um, as we said, it can, this can be done by osteotomy, femoral or pelvic, it can be uh, done by casting. Um, uh, in mild cases, like small cases, uh, small kids, uh, it can also be obtained, uh, as we said, with therapy um, and stretching, especially in abduction, means you keep uh, in the therapy and the parents keep doing exercises to uh, push the uh, legs uh, out, uh, and that will keep uh, the head um, inside the acetabulum. Uh, all these are uh, treatment uh, regimen uh, to keep the femoral head inside the acetabulum, allowing uh, for remodeling and having as mm, uh, much as possible uh, round head. Uh, how can we achieve that? Uh, sometimes we achieve that with femoral osteotomy. So here the, um, the patient is a little bit older. He's seven and a half year old. Uh, so uh, the method of keeping this head seated in is to do a femoral osteotomy, as you see here, and push the head more inside the acetabulum. So this head was pushed more inside the acetabulum, and by pushing the head more inside the acetabulum, uh, you can see that uh, here um, we were uh, able to end with more round head. Uh, so um, uh, this is one method of achieving this goal, uh, which uh, keeping the head seated inside the acetabulum to um, uh, allow as uh, much uh, possible as round uh, sh uh, shape uh, to happen at the end of the treatment uh, regimen. Uh, thank you. All my videos are for your education purpose only. Please consult your doctor before any decision.